The day of the earthquake was the darkest day of the year. This far north, what counted as day was just twilight stretched thin, so that no shadows fell and the steeple of the church made no impression on the snow, and the river and forest and hills were all suspended in the same half-finished light. The effect of this was a shared, if unexpressed, uneasiness, but most people were used to it. If given the choice, they would have said, let there be darkness, and gone back to their work. That was the sentiment, anyway, around people who had grown up here, Lars Levi among them. He found the cold and dark invigorating. He was a man of extremes, and so he was drawn to extremes. They suited him. They spurred him on. But even he had to admit the morning was off kilter somehow. He had dreamed the night before of something of importance, what he couldn't say, and it troubled him that he might have missed its message. He was a man who put credence in these things, in the importance of what was felt, in part because his mother had been that way, and in part because the land made everyone here that way. No one could live beneath the northern lights and the midnight sun and not come out of it sure there was something besides rationality at work, least of all Lars Levi, the pastor of this most northern parish for the past 22 years, a man of some hubris but not a man who could be accused of insincerity. He was here to preach. He believed in what he spoke, but today he was especially sure of his purpose, and the weight of that purpose made him anxious. He paced up and down the side aisle, inventing little tasks to check on. Had Henrik rung the bell? Had Willa made the fire in the stove? The church was filling up. It really was, the Finns in their usual places towards the front, while behind them were the Laplanders, the Laps, the Sami, whatever you called them. He used Lap when he spoke to the Swedes and Sami when he spoke to the Sami. And it occurred to Lars Levi that he was doing it. He had 829 parishioners stretched over 100 miles, and a good quarter of them were here. The Finns had skied for hours along the frozen river, and the Laps had harnessed their reindeer to the sledges, and they had driven 20, 40 miles through the snow to get here, to a tiny church village in Sweden, where 10 of the 40 inhabitants were his own family, to hear him speak, him, Lars Levi Lestadius, and made him smile to himself when he thought no one was looking. But had Henrik rung the bell? Thank you.